The quarterback position is a lucrative one that oftentimes pays very well. Some of the greats at the position, whether it's Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, John Elway, or whoever else it may be, have made a ton of money over their careers. And then there's people that happen to play the quarterback position but still make a ton of money. Meet Matt Flynn. Matt Flynn spent his collegiate career at LSU from 2004 to 2007. He spent most of his time there as a backup because this guy named Jamarcus Russell was there. You know, that same Jamarcus Russell with the cannon arm that would eventually go first overall in the 2007 NFL draft. Anyway, once Russell went to the NFL, Flynn had finally became the starter for the LSU Tigers. Flynn had a pretty good season and it ended in a 2008 BCS National Championship victory over Ohio State where Flynn threw for four touchdowns. In the 2008 NFL draft, Matt Flynn was selected in the seventh round by the Green Bay Packers. Obviously, the odds are stacked against you when you're a seventh round pick, but when you're backing up Aaron Rodgers just entering his prime, there isn't much room for you to play at all. But at that time, Rodgers had not made his first NFL start yet. He was entering his fourth season at the age of 25 years old, about to take over for Brett Favre, who had been there for 16 seasons, but it was realized pretty quickly that Aaron Rodgers was in fact the real deal. And with that being the case, Flynn barely played in his first two seasons in the NFL. Throughout those first two years, he had zero touchdowns, one interception, and 17 passing attempts. In 2010, Flynn did not play much the first 13 weeks, but a concussion to Aaron Rodgers in Detroit finally got him some real playing time. Flynn played the entire second half against the Lions, and they were down to their third string quarterback, but Flynn did not play very well. A bad red zone interception followed by a failed conversion on 4th and 1 led the Packers to dropping a game to the 2-10 and 10 Lions. And to make matters worse for Green Bay, Rodgers was not available next week and Flynn had to make his first career start at New England, which usually does not go well for young quarterbacks. But against all odds, Matt Flynn went in there and threw for 3 touchdowns and the game came down to the final drive. He was sacked on the Packers' final offensive play on New England's 15-yard line and Green Bay lost a close one, 27-31. After that game, Rodgers was back and played the rest of the season, leading the Packers to a deep playoff run. And as we know, Green Bay would end up winning Super Bowl 45, so Matt Flynn can say he started a game at quarterback for his Super Bowl team, so there is that. 2011 was year four for Matt Flynn, and it was also the last year of his rookie contract. To this point, he had not really shown enough to get a big extension or earn a starting job elsewhere. But when opportunity presents itself, you have to take advantage, right? The 2011 Packers were undefeated for most of the year, but a week 15 loss at Kansas City put an end to a potential perfect season. Season. With everything wrapped up, including a first round bye and home field advantage, the Packers gave Matt Flynn the start in week 17 versus the Lions. Now keep in mind, the Packers are 14 and 1, have nothing to play for, and the Lions are fighting for a playoff spot. As a matter of fact, Aaron Rodgers, Charles Woodson, Clay Matthews, and some other starters were actually resting this game. And although it was one meaningless week 17 game, the stakes were high for Matt Flynn himself. A bad performance here, and he may be out of the NFL or barely holding on to a roster spot but a great performance pretty much guarantees a second contract and maybe a chance to start for another team next year. And what do you know, Matt Flynn had the game of his life. He was so good that he broke the Packers franchise record for most passing yards and passing touchdowns in a single game. A franchise that had the likes of Brett Favre, a few years of Aaron Rodgers, Bart Starr, and Lynn Dickey, and some others as well. Matt Flynn went 31 of 44 for 480 yards and six passing touchdowns and a 136 quarterback rating, which helped the Packers to a 45 to 41 victory over the Lions. The funny thing is, Flynn later admitted that Aaron Rodgers was the one calling the offensive plays during this six-touchdown performance, so maybe A-Rod has an offensive coordinator gig in his future. Green Bay did get out in their first playoff matchup, and Flynn was now a free agent. The beauty of free agency is that all you need is one team out of 32 to believe in you, and that's where the Seattle Seahawks came in. Flynn was in talks with the Miami Dolphins as well, but he signed a three-year, $26 million contract with $10 million guaranteed with the Seahawks. When Flynn was signed there, it seemed like he was going to be the starting quarterback there, no questions asked. Tavares Jackson was the starter in Seattle the prior year, but he did not do much to secure his job. But Seattle did end up taking a guy by the name of Russell Wilson in the third round that year, but having a non-first round quarterback start week one for you is very rare. But Russell Wilson proved in his first preseason that the Seattle Seahawks were better off with him as their starting quarterback. And it's not like Matt Flynn was terrible in the preseason, he actually played okay the first two games and then finished going 11 for 13 for over 100 yards, one touchdown and no turnover in his final game, but while Flynn had what I'll call a pretty good preseason, the rookie Russell Wilson was basically flawless. Not only what he did as a passer, but that added element of what he could do with his legs showed up as well. Although Flynn was signed to the big contract and Russ was on a third round rookie contract, a much smaller deal, they knew that what they had in Wilson was the best option to win. So Russell Wilson was named the week one starter, which kind of shocked the football world if I remember, but it wasn't like this was the nail in the coffin for Matt Flynn in Seattle, of course it hurts, but after all, Wilson could have struggled and the job could have been Flynn 
happens at any given moment. Wait, what do you mean Russell Wilson was about to have a Hall of Fame career? Welp, scratch that idea. Wilson ended up being a good rookie quarterback, and the Seahawks were winning a lot more games than they were losing at that time. They finished 11-5, and and Flint ended the regular season getting nine pass attempts on the entire year, only coming in for garbage time and a 58-0 victory for Seattle. Seattle would lose in the divisional round to Atlanta, and with Russell Wilson supplanted as their starting quarterback, they traded Matt Flynn to the Raiders for a couple of mid-round draft picks. This happened just one year after they signed him to a $26 million contract. Flynn was in competition with Terrell Pryor, who eventually became a wide receiver, but at that time was still the quarterback, you may remember. Pryor started the first three weeks and wasn't all that impressive, so they gave Flynn a chance to start in week four. Flynn had a mediocre game, and the Raiders would end up losing 24-14 to in Washington, and the job was back to Pryor after just one week. Raiders head coach at the time, Dennis Allen, announced that Flynn was now the third-string quarterback behind Pryor and Matt McLoyan, and just about a week later, he was released by Oakland after making just one start. Was it unfair? Probably, but that's the nature of this business, unfortunately. Flynn was then signed by the Buffalo Bills for a few weeks as their top two quarterbacks at that time, E.J. Manuel and Thad Lewis, were out with injuries. But once both guys were healthy, Flynn was released, having not gotten a pass attempt for Buffalo. And then it was back home to Green Bay. The Packers picked up their one seventh round pick and brought him in during a time of need. Flynn was now on his third team in that 2014 season, but the Packers had a couple of quarterback injuries, so they definitely needed somebody. Aaron Rodgers was out multiple weeks with a collarbone injury, and his backup was also out, leaving Scott Tolzien and Matt Flynn as the only quarterbacks on Green Bay's roster. In week 12 that season, Tolzien was benched for Flynn in the third quarter of a 23-7 deficit, and Matt Flynn almost brought them back to victory. The game went to overtime, and each team kicked a field goal in an eventual tie, but Flynn did save them from taking a loss. He would start the next four games before Rodgers returned, and the Packers stayed afloat going 2-2 two two in that span. They got destroyed in his first start at Detroit, but the next three weeks were all competitive games. Flynn played very well in weeks 13, 14, and 15, including an awesome comeback victory versus the Cowboys when they once trailed 26-3 at halftime. Rodgers would come back for week 17 and threw that memorable fourth down touchdown to Randall Cobb to lock up the NFC North. At that time, it was a great victory, and Flynn keeping them at 2-2-1 under his watch helped them make the playoffs, but they would lose in the wildcard round to the Niners. Flynn signed another one-year deal to stay in Green Bay in 2014, but this time he barely saw the field, only attempting 16 passes over six different games. And 2014 would end up being the last time Flynn got playing time in a regular season NFL game. In 2015, he was signed by New England to help back up Jimmy Garoppolo during Tom Brady's four-game suspension, but he was waived in favor of Ryan Lindley. In August, he signed with the Jets after Geno Smith broke his jaw. He played very well in their final preseason game, but did not make the final cut, which he later admitted he was quote-unquote ticked off about. And then during 2015 as well, he signed with the New Orleans Saints after Luke McCown got injured, but he did not appear in a single game. In a 2016 interview, Flynn summed it up perfectly in one sentence. I don't think there was a dull moment in my career. From winning two national championships in college, to a seventh round pick, to a Super Bowl champion, to a magical Week 17 game in 2012, to being benched for Russell Wilson and Terrell Pryor, the man has really seen it all. Since he's last played, Flynn has not really been in the news too much, but his sarcastic tweet about Brock Osweiler's massive contract from the Texans got some laughs, and he's now focused on his own company called My High, which is pretty much a healthy sports drink. He said he enjoyed his eight years in the NFL and regrets nothing, but you do feel bad for the guy because he never got a real chance to be someone's franchise quarterback. Anyway, that'll do it for this video. Leave a like and subscribe for more NFL content if you guys enjoyed, and I'll talk to you guys next time.